Hi, it's Jess here from nightjessa.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today on another junk journaling video day. And um, last week I showed you how I um, took this journal out of uh, a cover that really didn't work and, and made this little cover. So this is a tiny little journal. I thought I'd use this to try and get me into maybe daily journaling. Uh, so I didn't want anything too big for writing in. And um, so there is a few bits of embellishments that that need to be done. And lots of people ask the question is, do you decorate before or after you sew your journal in? Well, I've, I'm kind of doing both. So I'd already created the pockets um, and, and some of the tags um, before I sewed it in. But some of these need embellishing now. So I'm going to do the embellishing now on these. I did make um, some tags. I like to on a Sunday, I just I just play. So I had made some tags in, in one of my playing sessions. So um, now we're going to decorate. So the front isn't decorated. And I want some pockets in, in here. And um, so I'm just going to go through the kit and um, see see what I come up with. Right, so before I do the embellishing, I just thought I'd sort of go through with how I put my pages together. So this is the size um, that, that your sheets from the kit come. So they're an A4 sheet. And what I did was I printed them all one side each of the sheets and then I put them back in and printed on the other side made sure that they didn't have the same piece on the one side than the other so I made them double-sided uh, this saved me coffee dyeing and I just wanted something that would be quick uh, so that's what I did and then folded them all in half added their uh, tea stain doily that's um old grid paper my son gave me all his old um exercise books and things so that was me I was thinking about adding a little pocket there so this was quite simply done just half a sheet that i'd trunk down to two sheets per page so just folded in half, folded that corner down, folded that one down and that one down. Thought that would make quite a nice little pocket possibly. Um, that's one of those paper bags. I haven't cut that one yet. So I went through and sort of looked at which pages were going to go opposite where. That's another one of my son's old exercise books. Quite like them. They've got a little bit of a vintage look and feel about them that's some parchment paper I thought that would go nice in it um, that's an old it's not an old at all that's actually quite a new invoice sheet I was gonna coffee dye it and then I thought oh, I'm just gonna chuck it in white I might change my mind I might not and then that's the center and then that's down the other way so what I did let's count the sheets so of the printed paper, one, some of them, I think when I fed it back in, it had moved slightly, but I can ink around those white bits. So one, two, I'm ignoring those. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight of the digital sheets. So you times that by four. 8 and 8, 16, 16, it's 32. So that gives you 32 pages front and back. And then I added in the doilies. People don't generally count these, but we'll count these. So I added in one sheet, paper bag two, that one, three, that one, four. That's it, isn't it? Oh, and that one, five. So I added in five, so... 5 and 5 is 10, 10 10 is 20, so that's 52 sheets in there. So it's quite easy to sort of build it up. And so that's what I did, and then I added pockets and things. So that was the basics of it. So I just thought 
how to show that. So, got all my bits. So I shrunk the pages down. So, um, like that would be um, a pocket page with ephemera. That's it printed down to two per sheet. And then I did do them again. So I got four per sheet. So I've got different sizes because I'm going to make, I thought I'd make three different size um, journals. And, um, and it also gives you some of these little ones that you can make then collage, which is what I did to make these tags was, um, oh no, I didn't do a collage. I used the full sheet and just added all the little bits. They were quite nice. And then I just backed these on tea dyed paper to make those elements. So I've got quite a few cut out and I'm also using these sheets. This is the family ties um, kit as well. And I shrunk those down. Um, to, to give me some little pictures. I think the backs of these cabinet cards are lovely as well. I've got a few myself actually that I bought. So I was using my scan and cut to cut things out. So that was quite cool. Plus I made, I took one of the tags in the set. It's not on any of these sheets that are printed. And um, I sort of used it to to make a tag these ones have been I can cut them down so I thought that was nice a nice size for my little list to, to make so I kind of used those that's a freebie somewhere so I've got lots of bits like this that I can use I love the tickets they're just so nice to use um, I've got some there as well that was where my printer ink was running out as it was that one and I do love these these little things as well which I thought would look good on the edge of pockets so we've got these pockets here that's quite nice down the edge although they're not long enough I'd have to use a longer one but that sort of thing these would go on the smaller pockets if I wanted to add a little bit of something else to those onto those pockets there and some of the little ephemera that I've cut out could also be used on there and some of my little my little pictures so I'm gonna start sticking those down so I really like the top section of these sort of um, invoices and I think they'd make a really nice pocket front um, I'm gonna fold it over to reinforce it so it's a little bit thicker it's the first pocket in the in the journal so I thought I'd use the whole sheet and um, have them uh, stuck down together I'm inking up the edges just in case you can see a little bit when it's when it's folded over and um, obviously inking around because there's actually sort of inking in the pr printing so I felt it needed a bit of inking uh, it is slightly over the wider than the one that's in there but I didn't mind that and um, so then I'm just going to add a little bit of embellishment there to the pocket top because I think that'll look nice so a little bit of inking around those edges and um, some of them were printed um, when the ink was running out so it's a little bit of purple on them but I'm just covering it with ink and then I'm doing another pocket uh, this one is for the back of the um, the journal. And then I'm, I'm realising that it's not actually quite big enough. I obviously cut the other one too big and that one not big enough. So um, I'm going to make um, a different pocket for that one. Um, so I'm sort of finding the sheet I want. And, um, and I'm thinking I'm going to do this one so that it's got folded along three sides. So whatever goes in it actually fits it completely so I'm just scoring there about three eighths of an inch um, I'm gonna to have to cut a bit of that off because it's too wide and then sort of go in I'd say just about three eighths of an inch felt half an inch wasn't wasn't big enough and then a flap uh, for the top as well to, to fold down so just scoring them I've made pockets like this before in in, in journals um, so I want the top bit cut down so that it's got a nice lip on it 
Um, I'm folding it to the inside because it's not double sided. If that was double printed, I would have probably done it. Uh, sort of fold it back on itself. Um, this is music paper going sideways. I quite liked it because it went with the music paper that's on the sheets that I've decorated it with. So now I'm just going to glue the frap down before I do any sort of cutting. Um, so we just got to slant the tops and the corners so that they can fold in um, to glue down. We glue down the sides first um, and then glue the bottom up over the sides. Uh, that's, that's the way to make sure that you don't get whatever you put in the pocket caught on that bottom section that, that goes up. So um, I'm just taking uh, a bit of one of those tops to decorate it because I think that will be pretty. And I'm only going to um, glue it down on three sides so I have a little extra extra tuck um, there. So um, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Just gluing those down to the back there. I always think it's nice to have a pocket on the front and the back. And there we go, gluing that down three sides after putting some inking around. Not that you'd see the inside of the pocket, but you know, just in case. That's just a dry baby wipe to wipe up any spillage. So you can see that the pocket goes all the way to the edge, but not the tuck on the front. Um, so uh, this one needs gluing down. Uh, so this pocket is actually going to be really quite um, thick because it's double thickness, plus it's got all that glue on it. So it'll be a nice robust uh, pocket. I'm going to stick the uh, the little uh, strip along there. I've gone for the sort of slightly more gothic one. I uh, thought that went with um, like the black edging on the on the cover. Quite like the look of that. So that would be perfect. No extra little tuck on that, but that's but that's fine. Um, and I think that goes nice. So it's a different top of this sort of invoice to the one that's on there. And I'm liking that. So now um, I've got to do some journaling cards. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing there. Cutting some in. But I don't know what. Oh, I was thinking of doing a pocket. That's what I'm doing. Thinking of doing a pocket there. So I've got a double sheet there. So I'm going to fold down one corner to corner and then fold the other corner so that there's maybe be a half inch gap and then fold them all back on themselves. Um, and that's a, a double pocket, but I'm not going to put it on the front. I'm going to put it somewhere else in the book. And... Um, and then because of the nature of the more you go into your signatures, you actually end up with slightly shorter, um, well, not so wide pages. So uh, I had to trim a bit off, decided to fold the bottom one under. Um, and I quite like that because it goes with the page. So just going to have to glue those folded over edges down and... Um, and I'm just going to glue on the three sides. That will give the pocket a bit more strength as well, having two layers there. But I am going to cut a little bit off because it was interfering with the fold. And um, that, wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been good. So now that they're done, so make sure when gluing down, you only go on the shortest um, edge there on the centre. Um, and then down the three sides there so that we've got a pocket on the back as well as a pocket on the front bit so we've created a double pocket there and um, I think that's quite a nice little touch so now realizing that I hadn't actually decorated um, that tag I think that's from Tracy Fox's tag fabrication um, set I finally bought that she did a little bit of a discount so I thought oh I'll get them and um, so that's a little frame. So I thought I'm going to cut down one of those little um, uh, cabinet cards to, to fit in that frame. I thought that would look cute. And then a cabinet card back um, and, a, and, a, and a ticket on there. So just a bit of ink in, a nice little cluster, nothing too much. The, the tag already has a little bit of decoration on it. 
Um, so I'd just like to add my own little bit there uh, to, to make it my own. Um, I like sets that aren't too over adorned but give you the embellishments that you can adorn it yourself because um, uh, I like to use my own imagination on it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of um, ageing to it with um, that Quiet Meadow set. I really like that set. So we've got this lovely um, spray of dots and um, that sort of tight worn script which I think goes really well with this sort of painted attic. Um, is it called painted attic set? Can't remember. Um, attic papers. I think it is attic papers. That's what it is. Another one that was reduced that I sort of grabbed. And then I'm going to take one of the tickets and um, because it goes with the ticket that I put on the tag and then that could be a nice little pull at the top rather than adding ribbon. I've not put too much ribbon in this journal. I say I just wanted it to be quite a nice sort of easy put together journal. I know some people are like oh I don't know where to start. Well you know get a kit like this and just put it together and make it as simple as pos. And uh, so I'm rounding the edges there because it's actually quite a tight squeeze going into that um, that pocket. So just adding a little bit of stamping there to, to that pocket before I add some some decoration. So just sort of pulling out different bits, seeing how they look, and um, sticking them sticking them down. I think I do end up adding something a little bit of a doily to that in the end. Um, so now I've started stamping things on, I'm now going to go and stamp on everything in sight um, because, well, that's 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 what I do. Um, so uh, now just sort of adding um, little bits to that side pocket. I'm kind of going for a bit of a cluster with um, those cabinet cards, the front and the back, and um, some of the tickets, etc., to um, to get them to get them decorated. I think that might be somebody at my door. No. Um, yeah, so uh, sorry about that. Just wanted to check the door. As this is recording, as it's playing, I didn't want to stop it. So there, I just used a strip of something that was left over from making a tag. And uh, yeah, job's a good one. And um, so more stamping. I do love my bits of stamping on it. And, uh, and I kind of like that look of putting putting a strip of something I've cut off and, um, and uh, doing much the same, just adding, that's the back of a cabinet card. And now I'm just looking for uh, a photo maybe to go with it. So just sort of simple adorning on there. Oh, and I haven't, I haven't aged that. Uh, that card at all so need to do that and then we come to this so um, that's like a back of a postcard I really like that as a decoration so I'm gonna do that as a little tuck spot and um, so that will just be glued down three sides to give a nice little tuck spot at the front there so you've basically got three pockets which which is fab I love it and uh, gonna find a tag to go in there. I think I'm going to use one of those um, tags like a like a lug luggage tag. Um, they were a freebie, I'm not quite sure where. I pick up loads of little freebie things. So that's just stuck on the back of, I think it's one of the tags that was printed in the kit. So just trim that down. You can see how quick then you can you can make a tag. Um, and then I just like to make it my own by inking and stamping and aging and um, and it's you know quite easy to still be able to write something on it or just look at it because it's pretty I just love old things so I'm putting the hole that's in there so that's quite nice that's gone in there um, and then I'm going to do more stamping I decided that invoice was too white so that's having a little bit of aging on it and uh, I think that does look a bit better 
a little bit more stamping everywhere just for good measure because you can never have enough aging dots in your journal I don't think so obviously decided that that wasn't quite old enough looking so another another pocket front there to um, do I quite like sort of marrying up one of those little old photos and the cabinet card backs no idea if the back is the one that goes with it so there's some stamping up doilies there that I've inked and uh, I think they add something little extra special um, to a to a little cluster um, like how they look and uh, so just glue it on as you can see the other side of it was uh, not a color that would go with this journal so stick them on I think that uh, makes a nice little and it kind of goes with the uh, doily that I've used in the tag as well and I used it as a stencil so more stamping need to age that other half of the uh, the invoice there to make it look old I probably should have tea stained it really shouldn't I I probably got some tea stain somewhere I went to bed last night and had a quick look at this before I did and I thought oh four envelopes would be nice so I left myself a little note eight four envelopes for this journal because I would have forgotten so I printed some more sheets out because I needed some bigger sheets to make my envelope so I've done these double-sided so that when I make my envelope the inside's all right I've left two there not double-sided because then I'm going to use these for tags so I need to um, put some tea stain paper on the back so I'm going to use my envelope punch board I think to make these uh, little envelopes because one of my thoughts is I'm going to put one there um, so they need to be sort of that big so uh, let me get my punch board so let's have a look at the art sizes so um, if you look down the card size, your envelope will be ever so slightly bigger than that. And so, um, three by four or thereabouts, three by four is quite a nice size. That would have it four that way, three that way. Yeah. I think that's quite a nice size. So let's do one three by four. So what size paper do we need for a three by four? Do you know I'm going to put my glasses on? We need six by six. I'd rather actually go a little bit smaller to three by three and a half um, so that I can use half a sheet actually and get two out of one of these so let's go five and three quarters by five and three quarters that'll make a nice tag if I reinforce it or whatever so let's make this one and then I'll make I'll make the rest without you so we look there we've got five and three four five and three quarters by five and three quarters so our school line is two and five eighths so we look along here for two and five eighths which is there and we punch and we score and now we've got that score line to put there on the score guard punch and score I don't need my glasses anymore Jess. you can see those bits punch and score and then the last one punch and score and that's what I was hoping was that uh, 
that really nice design. Let's just get rid. Would be on my flap. So I'm just going to score these bits. And I think that's a really nice, a really nice flap. Fill me envelope and then the other side is that, which is also quite nice, but I can decorate that. Now, the other thing with the envelope punch board is you've got a corner around it, so I could round that corner. But, you know, actually, I quite like that one pointed because it's got a square there. So I might not round these corners. I might round the inside. I might round that one. Although, actually, I'll probably end up folding this down. But I'll just show you what it looks like. Rounded. Yeah, I'll leave it, actually. The other option is to fold that down, but I'm going to leave it at that. So I'm going to put my bone folder away in it. And that is super duper. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there to hold to hold that bit. There. And then that's going to glue up to there. So just going to put a bit of glue along the edges. So that's my envelope. Done. And I quite like that as the inside, making sure there's no oozing glue on the inside. That's a very nice. A very nice envelope. Um, I can ink round the edges if I so choose, which I think I will. And then I can use some of the little embellishments to. Decorate. Yeah, that even looks like an edge of an envelope there. So that's quite good. There we go. So that's the envelope which will clip around the front there. So I could have it like that. That's quite nice to be under there. I could use a paper clip. I can actually put a tag under there as well. That's quite nice on that side. Alternatively, I do that. And that's just got the flap there on that side. Either way. And then we want a little bit of journaling on the inside. So I might take one of these sheets i can just cut it down slightly often i do a bit of um coffee dye paper folded in half but i've got these so i might use these so it was to fit a, a three what was it to fit a card size that was three by three and a half so let's trim it down so that'll be our three let's do our three and a half so if I just cut that bottom bit off there that should fit in there yep yeah, fits in there really well for a journaling space and I might just use the hole puncher, corner puncher rather, 
on this as it's handy. So that gives us that. I like in the look of that. And I could just like that, liking that just as it is. And maybe on here, I might simply put a stamp. That one's quite a nice colour there. So let's get it inked around the edge. Could do with a nice little address or something on there as well. So glue that down. Like that one. And that one. So, yeah, so I like the, the franking on that one. postmark on that one that's what I like these stamp sets are retired but there might be something exciting coming up in the new catalogue which I'm delighted about um, in January I got to see it at the weekend and uh, it would be ages ago when this video is put out but um but yeah so liking that leave them because i'll need them for the other the other ones i'm going to make and i might find the english stamps by then um oh there's that little bit of script there i might put that on there make it look a bit like a an address i might just put a bit of it on like that there looks a little bit like an address. I like that. Uh, I quite like Life is a Magnificent Adventure as well. So I might stamp that on something a bit darker. Let's get early espresso. Like that, something simple. I don't want to go too mad. And then, oh, I've got one there. I've got a little black. Paper clip, which I think would be perfect. Stick that in there. That is. Super duper, that's what I want. So I'm gonna make three more of those, exactly the same. And uh, let's say I've just got a little double over thing there and I made journaling card there, which I might just leave as it is rather than decorate because then I can do whatever on it. So three more of those required. Uh, I was gonna make some yeah, I was going to finish these off. So these are just those pages shrunk down. Um, printed them. One, two, three, four to a page. And then I've just cut them down. I just think they make quite nice little journaling cards like that. So that one's popped there. This I stuck onto coffee dyed paper. I'm going to turn that into a tag. And um, that was just a printable. I think that was a free printable. I'm just going to leave that exactly as it is, just poked in there. I don't think it needs much else. But this needs some decorating. So 
I it needs trimming and it needs turning into a tag. So where's my little guillotine? If I just show you one and then I'll do all the rest afterwards. Right, I think that's pretty straight there. So let's just go around so that they are straight edges. So what have we got? Roughly three inches by five, I think. So there's that. I want to cut it. Um, tag top size like these are used. Which one did I use? I think I used that one. That's the one I think I used, even though I've got a smiley face on that one. Maybe it was that one. So you do that and to make it even, turn it round. Match the top and the sides. And match your tag topper. Mm, it might have been that one, it might not have been. But that will that will do nicely. Uh where's my pocket gone? There it is. Will that fit in there. Yeah, I might change them round. I might put that one in there. And of that at the back. Yeah, cook it on gas. That's the way we want that one. So let's give this a bit of decorating and then I'll do all the others off camera. Do a bit of stamping. That one has got a little bit on there. I think it needs a little, it's a bit bright. That's a bit better. That'll do. Uh, I might put a flower on it actually. So put these around. I like to add just a little bit of extra, but that can all be written on. Um, or I can put photos, whatever, like in that. Um, where's that little script I just had? That's still there. Put some of this script on here. Cool. Right, this needs a bit distressing around the edges. So I'll do the same. Those plain sheets that I've got that aren't backed, I'll be backing them onto coffee dyed paper. And it gives you quite a nice thick base for a card. So now I want to add to this, quite like the little doilies. Um, I do sometimes make my own with a lovely die set I've got. So I've got this encircled in beauty and um, that makes a really nice, quite a big doily. And then these ones make little adoilies and it's quite nice to cut these out of tea, 
two dyes of paper. So obviously that's not big enough. So I might get a few of those cut out and then we'll take it from there. There, so I cut them out. In the end, I didn't use tea dyed paper. I used one of these sheets that I had hanging about and I thought that was quite nice. Saves me um, doing, you know, inking. Um, I can use either side. And uh, yeah, I quite like that. So I might have that. Um, Stick a bit of that on. Don't know yet. Let's just have a look at some of these bits that I've got from the two kits that uh, that were cut out. I do like these tickets. Although I don't need tickets if I've got that. So um, I do quite like having a bit of. Um, vintage music or vintage book page as well so let me have a little look in me in my scrap box so i have an absolutely massive scrap box which is just literally under my desk so i just chuck things in there so there there's some music on oh, that music that's been all right so there's a bit of music there's some little bits of book page that I have cut up. So we'll just take that little lot and put the rest of it back. Oh, there's a smaller sheet of music. I love that. So, yes, yeah, so whilst I'm crafting, I just chuck it under there. And, um, yeah, there's loads of stuff in there. I might do a video one day where I literally... pull that out now because this has got music paper on I thought this was quite nice but I think I might prefer smaller smaller music print um, might be nicer might use my my ripping ruler rip an edge I do like it when I can see Like the treble clef and things so and we've got the treble clef there so we might so that I'll take the top off Oh, I might just take it off about there. Oh. That's the problem with vintage paper is it's quite weak. Oh, easily ripped, no matter. Right, let's do a bit of inking on this. Where was my little sheet that I was using to ink on? Because that is quite bright. Completely come away now. Might use both bits then. So now that's immediately transformed the colour of that page. So although it is vintage, I think this book's about 100 years old. It's um, want as vintage looking as I wanted it. So. do that I think I quite like I'm not liking that I'm having a change of mind I might do an admit one and then it's like we bought a ticket to the concert that the music's playing for And then I might put a 
a faux uh, put all these nice photos. That could be the conductor. Don't like the colour of the conductor. A bit of a different shade. There, you fit better now. Liking that. Yep, liking that. Might put a little bit of a little bit of soft suede around that. Be a nice doily that side, but not for this project. That's what I love about these dies is you can make doilies out of anything, and they're nice little sizes for tags, tags and pockets and envelopes and things. And we've got a never ending supply. I am getting some new doilies as well which are also coming in the new catalogue, which I was very excited about when I saw them. It's like, oh, doilies. underneath on it and I've stuck it down. I can probably pull it back actually. Quite probably. Yeah. That's why I like collar does give you a little bit of extra sticking time whereas Tombow it would have been stuck you'd have had no chance absolutely no chance whatsoever so we've lifted that yeah I quite like the idea of that being the conductor or the composer And that's my ticket to go and see it. God, I haven't seen... I was just about to say, I haven't seen live music for ages. I went the other week, which was the first time in ages. Well, actually, I've been twice recently. First time in like two years. Or a year and a half. Full lockdown. There we go, so quite liking that. So then we need um, a tab for the top. So I might use that other admit. Admit one. I've done that before, quite like it. I think it's quite a neat idea. So get rid of the white bits. Found this on my desk. No idea what colour's on it. I think it might be black. Seems to be lasting for ages without inking it back up. Which is quite 
quite good. All right. By having a tab like this, it saves me putting any ribbon on it. Which also speeds it up. I was trying to sort of see if I could make some journals quickly because I want to do some for presents. And as it's less than six weeks now to Christmas, I can't, I can't be doing them if they take weeks. I kind of wanted to have a journal on a journal in a day or a couple of hours. Do you know what I mean? So it would be finished. There we go. That's my tag. That will fit in there. All right, there's these bits. These bits need sticking down. So I'm going to put some Tombow on those bits. I'm going to get my glasses. Well and truly be stuck down there. And my dry baby white will mop up any that's oozed. And any sticking that's still there can be eradicated with my embossing buddy if I can find that. There it is. I've got a little embossing buddy. You can make these your own. I've had this a very long time, so it's got sort of powder in, but you can. Make your own with a bit of muslin and could use talc, corn flour, and that um, no sticky now. All gone. So that will now go in there. Oh, I'm liking the look of that. So I'm gonna make three more um, envelopes to dot in here and I was I've got that journey card I might decorate that as well in the same way and that's just another one of those in there and I was thinking these side pockets might I could put another big journaling card in like these ones they would fit in although I might leave them I can make them as I need them because it is getting it's quite chunky now so I'll make those and then we'll be done and I'll think about decorating the front okay so I've finished all the envelopes and um Paper clip them in. Uh, did you see me finish this tag? I think you did actually. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I found me, I found me old uh, British stamps, and so I did it exactly the same way. So they've all got that same stamp that looks a little bit like somebody's addressed it so that one's there that one's there and then there's one on the back page here there. so that's them finished so now all I need is to cover the front 
Okay, as this video is getting quite long, um, I've split it into two parts. So now go and check out part two, where you'll see how I finished the cover off and did the decoration and added the closure. So see you in part two.